Now, the Technical University of Kenya boasts of having the first green vehicle, a tuk-tuk that runs purely on biodiesel fuel. The fuel is a byproduct of not just any form of vegetable oil, but used vegetable oil with the help of a patented pre-treatment tank. And as KTN's Catherine Amanda reports, Kenya may not be lagging behind when it comes to the green revolution. Nairobi County is slowly becoming synonymous with traffic and congestion. Whether you use a matatu or own a car, one ends up wasting productive time on the road and the fumes emitted from these vehicles has an impact on our environment. Engineers and technologists have discovered that the solution lies in this blob of used vegetable oil. We started in uh, 2012, April 2012, uh, and the idea was that uh, we saw there's a lot of waste that hotels have that they throw away, and we partnered with at least two hotels, Kenya Utali uh, Hotel and uh, Hilton Hotel, where we collected some feedstocks. And we were able to test uh, this material in the lab setting, and we, we found out that we could actually get a very high yield of about 90%. This one, you actually have a problem trying to light This it. waste is what makes biodiesel, using a reactor. But it's not just any reactor. It has a pre-treatment tank that first purifies the waste. So that pre-treatment method is what makes our biodiesel system unique because of breaking down the impurities and allowing us now to react the methoxide with the, bio, the waste vegetable oil so that we are consistently getting a very high yield. When the purified oil reacts with methoxide, 90% of the byproduct is biodiesel and 10% is glycerol. A litre of biodiesel should cost not more than what is already uh, the cost of uh, petrol diesel, which is around 100, 105. But with the glycerol, a litre is 650. So you can see the addition is, is quite a lot in the whole uh, calculation of, of the economic value that you're getting. Researchers think that this product, if taken seriously, can replace petrol diesel. The modification has made the biodiesel to be reasonably less viscous to an extent that we can be able to break it down into small particles. Now this tuk-tuk has been running on biodiesel fuel for the past six months. So this means that the fact that it can work on this kind of engine, it means that it can work on a bigger engine. So Prof, I and Owino are going to take it for a ride and see how it goes. At first, the difference you will notice between a tuk-tuk running on biodiesel and one running on petrol diesel is the distinct smell of cooking oil. If this product is taken up by owners of generators or vehicles that use petrol diesel, at first it may feel like Nairobi is cooking up a storm across the country to Transoya County. Paulina Korir is preparing a meal for her family. Her main source of energy is firewood. She represents the millions of women living in rural areas. Because she's getting on in her years, collecting firewood is not something she can do every day. So she collects maize cobs to supplement the firewood. The smoke or carbon monoxide that comes from the combustion is neither good for her health nor the environment. <laughs> Could the solution for Polina Courier and thousands like her be in using this biodiesel stove? In further experimentation, we realized that this uh, biodiesel could be able to be used on our local domestic stoves and they could also be used in our domestic uh, local uh, uh, lamps. The question is, however, are Kenyans willing to go green? Through this research, we can also recommend policy that can encourage us to be green. But if you, if you say we're ready, I'll say we're still working at it. Technical University, in conjunction with United States International University and the Kenya Industrial Research and Development Institute, spent about two million shillings on this project. The machine was built at a cost of about 450,000 shillings. We are also looking to explore uh, whether we can also use thick plastics, which should actually reduce the cost to somewhere in the region of about 250,000 for a typical 100 uh, litre batch processing system. At 250,000 shillings, one can buy the machine and sell both byproducts at a profit. To a large extent, I do see that women will get involved. You, women with the youth, because of, the youth are not too far from where the women are. 
And, um, and I think this is something that needs to be inculcated in the youth and in the younger generation. Uh, so long as human beings are there and they can afford to cook and eat, we see this to be a sustainable and long-term project that can be able to benefit this Kenyan society. Innovators hope that this two million shilling project will be a significant step in Kenya's efforts to go green. Catherine Omwando, KTN.